What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Tuesday. Uh, hopefully, it, it's not hell getting back to the office after the long holiday weekend. Uh, but there's football this week, and there's a lot of random Vikings tidbit stories. Now, so we got some complaints. Uh, I was like, oh, these news dumps aren't really newsworthy. Uh, they're, they're mainly a loose collection of things that make me laugh and are quasi-related to the Vikings. So that's really what it is. And just ha have some fun. Like I, I always feel like there's much more prestigious and actually like you know hashtag good uh sources for actual news but we're here for the jokes that's all man uh first up so speaking of jokes clemson was a freaking joke last night so uh dabo a legendary head coach just whatever so yeah clemson clemson has really come on in, in the last like decade plus as a powerhouse program uh but i People always love seeing uh, powerhouses get their comeuppance, which which is fantastic. So Duke uh, hosted Clemson last uh, last night, and they beat the living piss out of them. It was great. Clemson's offense was stagnant. Duke got after him. Uh, Duke's quarterback uh, potentially could be a draft pick as well. So uh, they got something going there in Durham, man. And also, it, it's so weird, the juxtaposition, uh, because people love Duke football because they're – just go on get them, buddy. Yeah, go ahead, little fella, versus Duke basketball. Boo. Boo. Slap the floor again, Wojo. Go ahead. Get the hell out of here. But uh, it, it uh, last night, everyone was Duke. And also, uh, a certain alumni, uh, a clip surfaced, which is phenomenal. So uh, if you remember, uh, Vikings current special teams uh, coordinator, Matt Daniels, uh, played at Duke uh, before uh, going undrafted and, and playing in the league for a handful of seasons. Uh, but uh, he was there. He was a team captain. He was heart and soul. And you, you know the way the coach hack is down now. Just imagine him as a player. It's great, man. So Alec Lewis of The Athletic pointed this out. Uh, I give you Vikings special teams coordinator Matt Daniels. Now, we would play the video, except this is a quasi-family show. So uh, th there's some coarse language uh, in there, but it's beautiful, man. It, it, it got you fired up. It, it made you want to enroll in Duke and run through a brick wall and be pre-med. It was great, man. I mean, I, I love Coach Hat. Coach Daniels is fantastic. Uh, for my dollars to donuts, I think that he will be a head coach uh, in the NFL someday. Uh, I think that he is uh, that good, man. And the Vikings are very lucky to have him right now. Uh, speaking of lucky to have is uh, Vikings cornerback Byron Murphy Jr. And Andrew Kramer did up uh, a very good long-form piece uh, over the holiday weekend on Murphy, the new Vikings cornerback. Uh, and he tweeted this out. Uh, this spring... Cornerback Byron Murphy turned down more money from the Cardinals to join the Vikings. Uh, he's recovered from the fracture through his uh, L5 through S1 vertebra, which Arizona staff missed and let him play three games through. And now this is a season for me, which is kind of scary, man. And, you know, Arizona, uh, you look at all of those uh, polls where the NFLPA, you know, they voted this, that, and the other thing, and Arizona was dead last. And beyond players having to pay for their own dinners and stuff like that. But uh, if the medical staff misses something as serious as uh, fracture vertebra and they, they send you out there and you play through it, I mean, that's malpractice. I mean, that's like lawsuit territory stuff, man. And, you know, uh, Murphy, like, he didn't get the, you know, the free agent windfall uh, that he probably would have gotten uh, if he was healthy, if uh, they had caught that right away and he just sat. All right, but he still signed a two-year, $17.5 million deal here with Minnesota Vikings. Uh, and even though apparently uh, they offered him more money in Arizona, he probably just wanted to get out of there. And I think that does speak to you know the culture that Arizona had. I, I think it uh, also speaks a lot to uh, the culture that the Vikings are building. Where I mean, Murphy, I mean, he signed this deal like it's mid-level for a free agent cornerback. And the Vikings defense last year was very poopy. Uh, but maybe he sees it as a clean slate. And this is... A, and he believed what this defense could be uh, with Flora. So I, I respect Murphy. I, I think that he uh, is going to uh, have a chance to really uh, show what he's all about and really grow and show this year in the defense and be an absolute stud and a star uh, in, in this very aggressive attacking uh, defense in, inside and out. And you know it's great to hear some of the backstory uh, as well. Uh, a fortunate uh, story. So Al Lewis at the Athletic uh, pointed this out. A Vikings outside linebacker, coach, pass rush specialist Mike Smith is taking a personal leave of absence. Uh, Mike Pettin will be filling uh, will filling role in me time alongside uh, Imager Arbery, uh, which it, who is highly respected uh, inside the building. And 
it's unfortunate. Um, I also s- saw some uh, other outlets call this an ongoing situation, and you're know, not sure what's going on. But obviously, before right before the start of the regular season, it's got to be something pretty serious. And uh, you know, prayers up for you know, whatever Smitty uh, and uh, his, his loved ones are going through right now. And the whole thing about Mike Smith is that uh, so I the, the book uh, Collision Low Crossers. Uh, is about the 2010 Jets, and it's a fantastic, fantastic in-depth book. Uh, may, uh, had a really good insight into Mike Pettin, who's one of the main characters. Kevin O'Connell has a brief uh, appearance in there. You know the whole Rex Ryan thing, that you know the Sanchez thing. But also uh, one of the the main characters is Mike Smith, and you know that's one of the reasons why I followed his career. After reading that book, when he went to Kansas City, he went back to his alma mater, Texas Tech, even with the Grease of Grime and Green Bay Packers for a couple of years. And, you know, Mike Smith, interesting story. So he was a linebacker at Texas Tech, you know, trying to follow uh, the Zach uh, Thomas footsteps. He was a UDFA with the, or he might have been late round pick, whatever. He, he was on the Ravens with Ray Frickin' Lewis, right? And Smitty worked his way up into the starting lineup, had this really a horrible shoulder injury, which ended his career, but got him into coaching. Uh, and, throughout the book like you got to know his personality like he's a really easy guy to root for so um you know wishing the best for smitty you know whatever's going on hopefully um he gets taken care of and hopefully he's back like he, he's uh seems like a good dude and he's a hell of a coach so you know go from there man uh next up so uh hawkinson and, and his mega extension uh apparently they added a void year on the back end sean borman uh go uh, vikings added one void year to tj hawkinson's extension uh, which won't uh, affect any of the cap figures five-year max p- uh proration uh, but will allow them to convert salary to bonus in the future without needing player approval so uh the the contract over on spot rack it doesn't include the void year in 2028 uh, as of yet and uh, I think this you know this is something that teams have been incorporating a lot more recently uh, where you're, you're spreading out some of the cap charges you know kicking things down the road and if the if the player is no longer on the roster and and the contract voids you know that's when some of those hits come in but adding a void year that doesn't have any money on it does give the vikings some uh, premium flexibility where uh, if they want to uh, have a, a restructure uh, in subsequent years lower that cap number kick the can down the road a little bit which uh, again is a fine tactic because the cap keeps going up and up and up with new TV money, uh, new revenue streams for the league and for the players, as well as, I mean, there is an interest, you know, charged on uh, kicking cap hits to future years. So it, it is a smart move. And frankly, maybe they just should just add uh, zero dollar void years on the back end of all these deals just to have that flexibility. I think it is really smart. Uh, something that's also smart. So Star Tribune uh, over the weekend put out a great uh, crossword puzzle you know, uh, honoring the state fair, and it's huge. It's huge, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, the wife and I like doing crosswords, just a way to keep the mind idle as we slowly wait for our children to grow up and, and leave. Not nah, just kidding, but wh- whoever wrote wrote up the crossword for the state fair, like they, they got jokes, man. So uh, thirty two down was protectors for Kirk Cousins, comma briefly. Uh, and the answer was O line, so you know five letters O line, uh, and yes, it, it, so briefly takes on a, a double meaning here. Briefly means a uh, condensing offensive line down to five letters O line, but also briefly means they ain't protecting Kirk Cousins' ass for long, as Kirk said, a career high in sacks and pressures. But I, I just thought that that was hilarious. You know, so when, when you're texting with uh, your friends or family and you write LOL, how often do you actually laugh out loud? Probably not often, but this legitimately made me laugh out loud. It was fantastic, man. Uh, Something that's not fantastic. So Dov Kleeman uh, pointed this out. All 32 NFL fan bases were ranked from the best to the worst in terms of loyalty via study done by Canada Sports Betting, which doesn't even sound like a thing, right? Uh, Researchers in July, Bengals fans were ranked first and the Browns were ranked last. Uh, so the Vikings uh, checked in at number seven uh, in terms of you know, most loyal fan bases, the the Bengals, Eagles, uh, Niners, Bills, Jaguars, Chiefs, Vikings, all, all up there. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you know who's down near the bottom? The Packers and the Bears. It's delightful. It's good times. Good times. Uh, opposite of good times. So 
the wife and I are fans of the Jack Ryan show uh, on Amazon Prime starring uh, John Krasinski, Jim from The Office as Jack Ryan. And uh, yeah, my, my dad was a, a big Tom Clancy guy as well. Uh, so we actually have like first edition. Like, yeah, uh, that, that's my wealth. First editions of Tom Clancy books. That's great. But uh, I'm more of a you know listener, audible guy. So gotten all the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan novels, listening to them in chronological order. And they're great. Uh, they're fantastic. But recently got to the one, uh, The Sum of All Fears, which was turned into a Ben Affleck movie. Uh, it deviates quite a bit from the source material. I, I don't want to be one of those who is like, well, the book is way better than the movie. But it is. Now, there's a big time problem here. Big time problem. So the book came out in 1991, and Tom Clancy, uh, as you may know, uh, was in the running to buy the Vikings in 1998, and everything was signed, sealed, and delivered, but then a Homeboy got divorced, <laughs> and it took him out of the running, which is unfortunate because I think Tom Clancy would have been a great owner, but uh, the Vikings unfortunately got Red McCombs. Mm. But, you know, McCombs eventually led to the Wolves, and the Wolves are fantastic owners, so maybe things worked out the way that they're supposed to work out. Anyways, in this book, a, so, if you see in the movie, uh, a, a neo-Nazi try you know has has an A bomb, sends it to America, and tries to get a Russia and the United States to uh, have a nuclear war, all that stuff. Now, the book is, is sort of uh, the book sort of sticks to that uh, to that premise, but. In the movie, it's a it's a you know it's a championship football game. Obviously, they didn't get the rights to NFL, but in the book, Tom Clancy writes about the NFL. And the terrorists in the book, they bomb the Super Bowl. And throughout the book, it follows the Chargers, who is owned by one, one of the president's uh, cabinet members. It's really not important. But also, it, it, it also follows the Minnesota Vikings, who have a phenomenal season, led by rookie running back Tony Wills coming out of Northwestern, who is not Adrian Peterson because it's 1991. Also, Tony Wills is a great receiver as well. So it follows their progress throughout the season, uh, collision course, and th they meet in the Super Bowl, which is in Denver, by the way, in an indoor stadium. So that, that's where the terrorist act happens. And it, it bothers me so much. You know, not, not the whole fact of uh, you know, terrorism is horrible and all that stuff, but you know, this is fiction. But of course, of course, being a Vikings fan who are 0-4 in Super Bowls, you know, the Vikings and the Chargers, they both make it to the Super Bowl. Both fan bases, by the way, uh, have never enjoyed uh, a Super Bowl success. Uh, the, the Chargers lost a Super Bowl to the Niners like in the, in the mid-90s. Um, Steve Young threw six touchdowns. Shanahan was the OC. Anyways, the... So both fan bases have never tasted that sweet, sweet success, right? And the Vikings in the Super Bowl were holding serve. They're up 14-0. Uh, Chargers clawed a touchdown back, so they're up 14-7. And then the device went off. So the Vikings had the best chance to win a Super Bowl, and then ish happens. I mean, come on, man. I mean, we, we can't even win the Super Bowl in, in fiction. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. But top... Ta ta Tom Clancy, you were the chosen one, man. But I digress. Anyways, uh, that's <laughs> I, I guess that's it. Uh, that's the Vikings news dump for Tuesday. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.